Hey, good evening. Here we are Tuesday of uh, Holy Week, or, or the week of the Passion. And uh, I want to bring up a couple things before we get into our study tonight. But if you would like to go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 21, uh, we'll start reading at verse 23 in just a moment, or that's where we'll start. Uh, but uh, first of all, giving has remained uh, fairly strong. So those of you who are willing and able and can, please continue to do that so we continue the ministry that we do at church. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you for your giving your heart in in that. Uh, also, um, I made a call cast earlier about for anyone that would be able and willing, and, and please, those that uh, maybe wouldn't fit in the criteria of susceptible to the virus uh, or not as prone, uh, if you could come on Friday and help uh, hand out food at the food bank. Again, we're going to make some uh, safer um changes that we then not normally do so it's not going to be exactly like it's handed out normally but i think uh you'll be blessed by that if you're able to serve and so uh, come at eight but i need to know up front if you can do it or not so please let me know if you can help but come at eight to about 12 maybe we'll get you out of there earlier than that but and we will uh distribute food to those who are in need so remember that if you would so here we are tuesday uh, on, on sunday we looked at palm sunday and jesus triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and that was such a blessing. Now, last night, then we looked at how he cleansed the temple of those that were uh, buying and selling and trading and cheating and uh, taking advantage of the poor people and making a mockery of sacrifice. And so, um, obviously, Jesus wasn't happy with that. And so, we looked at that tonight. <clears throat> we'll look at uh, a long portion of scripture, and I'm, I'm not going to dig into it all um but i want you to if you can if you have time and and are able uh but tuesday was a very busy day for jesus during holy week very busy and we'll, we'll see some of that i'm going to go through some of it really quick but I, I want you to sort of grasp how much he did on that day and how much he spoke to people and what he was talking about on tuesday before he died uh, so tuesday starts off with matthew 21 somewhere around verse 23, and it goes through Matthew 26, verse 5. So a pretty good range of scripture there for one day. So Jesus is being confronted uh, with uh, by the who? By who else? The chief priests and the scribes and all them, and they're asking what kind of authority he has to be doing all these things that he's doing, saying all these things that he's saying. And so he answers with parables. Of course, Jesus told a lot of parables. That's the way people would relate uh, to him. He would tell something very, use something very natural and tell a biblical truth or a spiritual truth through that. And so um, he does that today. The first one is a parable of two sons. And he basically tells the chief priest in this parable, listen, you didn't believe the message of John the Baptist. You didn't believe the message that I give. But yet the tax collectors and the prostitutes did and they will see heaven and you won't. That's what he's saying. That's, that's, that would have been very shocking to them because they would have certainly looked down on the prostitutes. They were sinners. They were, these were worse sinners. And they were sinners. And Jesus never excuses sin. Always remember that. But because they had believed the message of John the Baptist and the message of Jesus, they had repented of their sins. Therefore, they were no longer these things. But they had believed the message of Jesus and John the Baptist and then repented. The Pharisees, the tax I mean, the chief priests have not done that. So therefore, they're still in their sins. And he said, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Parable number two was a parable of a landowner. Jesus tells the chief priests in this parable that they had responsibility to the nation of Israel to uh, uh, spread the good news, to uh, show Israel how they can know the Lord, but they failed. And he said, therefore, the kingdom will be taken from you and will be given to another who will be faithful and will produce fruit. And so um, pretty plain uh, in, this scripture, in that scripture. And he would be giving it to the Gentiles um, for, for the church age. And we would, uh, we would certainly be producing fruit. We've seen many people saved during the church age. Many people come to faith in Christ. Um, and so that's that. And then the third parable he gives, uh, another, again, a, th a third parable. Jesus loves the parable. He, he gives the parable of the marriage feast. And so the marriage feast and the king sent out slaves <clears throat> uh, to tell people, hey, come to the feast. Come on, come to the feast. And um, 
many people uh, didn't listen. They didn't listen to him, and they didn't come. And so he tells it's just a beautiful. If you get time, go back and read that. It's a wonderful, wonderful passage there. Uh, and then um, we have the at the end of chapter twenty-two, he has the uh, the give and take there, teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law. And um, he says, uh, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself." Uh, beautiful passage. We use that a lot. It's uh, very familiar to us, but it's uh, nevertheless good. That's a good passage. And so, um, and then we get into chapter twenty-three. So chapter 23 switches gears a little bit, and he gives warning or woes uh, to the, the uh, Pharisees and the scribes here. He gives them warnings over and over again. You'll, you'll read uh, in the scripture where he'll say, uh, Woe to you, fr scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses. Uh, and for a pretense, you make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater combination. He goes on in 15, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around the sea and land and make one proselyte. Uh, when you become one, you make him twice much a son of hell as yourselves. Uh, so he goes on and on. This is sort of basically the whole chapter is these woes. He gives them warnings of things that they have just dropped the ball on, things that they have failed to do that God has told them to do things that they had done wrong over and over and over again some of their thinking he said your thinking's way off on this because you think that to give um he addresses the giving of the of the the cumin and the spices the mint and the deal in verse 23 he says you think it's important to give that but you've you failed to see the weightier part and so uh, neglecting others and that kind of thing. So uh, he, he's just giving them these woes over and over and over again. So read those and see, hey, well, surely we're not, we don't want to be guilty of those things. And so uh, that's sort of chapter 23. And then we get into chapter 24. Chapter 24 and 25, uh, he really is dealing with the subject of the end times. Now think about this. Jesus is about to go away. And yet what subject does he choose to deal with the disciples about. I could have been many things. I mean, he does talk about many things in the last hours. But what subject would he devote two chapters to? The return of Christ. What will happen in those last days? And it's it's an interesting um, thing. He's, on the, he's at the Mount of Olives, sitting there with his disciples, privately, just them, <clears throat> Verse 3 in chapter 24 says, Tell us when these things happen, and what will be the sign of your coming, of the end of the age? And Jesus answered, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus answered and said, See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for these things must take place, but the end is not yet. Uh, I think of the last century uh, being one of the bloodiest centuries uh, in human history because um, we had two world wars, uh, certainly wars all over the world besides the two world wars. And um, it just seemed to never stop. The whole, the whole century was full of wars and rumors of wars. Think about the Cold War. The Cold War was nothing but rumors of wars. And so... Um, so he, he addresses that, and so we've seen we've certainly seen that come and gone. Um, he says uh, in verse seven, uh, he says, "Nation will rise against nation, uh, a kingdom against kingdom. Various places there will be famines and earthquakes. We've seen that as well. Um, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name." Well, that's happening too. It may not be happening so much in the United States of America, but all over the world it's happening. Um, people are being killed for their faith, being killed for the name of Jesus. Because they're followers of Jesus, they're being killed. And so this is this has happened as well. It goes on to say, many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. We've seen a great falling away um, in, in, in the last um, numerous years within the church. Whoops. Within the church, we've seen a great falling away, and um, we'll probably continue to see that, even though we personally in our church are seeing people saved and 
um, families join, and that's a wonderful thing, and we praise the Lord for that. But there have been um, a, a falling away where uh, people stray away from their faith. And so um, understand that we're not necessarily waiting on these things to happen because many of them have already happened. He goes on to say um, false prophets will arise uh, and will it mislead many. We've seen that. Cults, um, just people that call themselves um, a divine of some kind of Jesus, or, or actually use the name of Jesus. So remember them. Listen to this, verse 14. It's uh, 13. I don't want to skip that. It says, um, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Praise God. That's for us, right? Uh, it doesn't mean if you um, if you don't endure to the end that you're going to lose your salvation. It's just uh, it's just telling how someone we know the fruits of someone's life. If they endure to the end, and then they're saved. They are they are the called. They are the ones that are truly born again. This is the gospel in verse 14 of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony of all nations, and then the end will come. That's happening right now, guys. Right now the gospel is being preached uh, to the whole world uh, in person, uh, through Internet, uh, through radio broadcast, through television broadcast, um, and then even uh, people all over the world are seeing visions. Jesus is using these things to uh, uh, proclaim the gospel to those who need to hear it, who must hear it. And so, um, and so he gets in then to some specific things that's going to happen during uh, the time of tribulation. And so uh, I just want you to be aware of some of the things that he's talked about. And some of these are dual prophecies where uh, it's happened before, but it'll happen again. And, um, but uh, it, it's going to get really bad. And I'm so thankful that for the believer, we won't be here during that. Uh, for the believer, we will be uh, taken on to be uh, with the Lord um, when the when the real trouble comes during the time of tribulation, uh, he's going to take his bride out of here. He's going to protect us. We're going to be safe from this. And I, and I know not everybody agrees with that, but I believe the, believe the scripture teaches that. Um, and so we see in Matthew 24, he's, he talks about how one will be taken, one will be left. He, he uh, talks about one will be working in the field and they'll be gone. And uh, two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. And then I want to concentrate on this as we close. Verse 42, be on the alert. Did you hear that? Be on the alert. For you do not know which day the Lord is coming. We don't. It could be today. It could be right now. We just don't know. But he's coming. He's for sure coming. We don't know when. But he's for sure coming and it's coming soon. He says, be sure of this, that the head of the house, had the head of the house had known what time of the night the thief was coming he would have been on the alert and would have not have allowed his house to be broken into he had been ready he had been prepared for someone to come um, for this reason you so also must be ready the son of man is coming at an hour which you do not think he will and so uh, here we are so we're thinking well, when is he coming well we're seeing this virus uh, spread and um, actually it might be getting better the last few days a little better anyway but it's been horrible, hasn't it? And, and we can't uh, get out and do things like we used to. We can't, we can't go to church like we used to. And um, restaurants and all the things that we enjoy doing as a people, we're just not able to do. And uh, is this a sign of the end? You know, I, I don't know. I think, I think it probably is. But I can't verify that because no man knows the hour when, when the Lord will come. But the point is to be ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? If the Lord came right now and you heard the trump of God sound, would you cringe? Would you worry? Or would you reach up for him in anticipation of his coming? What, what would be your reaction? Your reaction is based on where you stand with the Lord right now. Uh, friend, church member, I love you and I want you to be ready. I want you to be prepared. I want when the trump of God sounds, I want you to jump up in the air ready to meet Jesus don't cringe. Don't live your life where there's a cringe. Live your life where there's an anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. Because soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. I love you. Can't wait till we get together and worship. But until then, we will continue putting out videos, trying to communicate with you uh, through callcast, uh, through Facebook, through whatever. Um, if you need me, call me. Send me a text, something. I love you. God bless.